Okay, let me see. Everyone is here. Okay, welcome. Nice to see your faces again. Uh, we had a brief discussion yesterday and I look forward to continue it now. Uh, let me present my, my current panelists. Uh, we have here um, Amina Koric. She is a student at uh, Erasmus University and she also took part in I Belong project uh, on uh, as a community mentor. Uh, then we have Joshua Patzold, who is uh, also uh, one of the I Belong uh, mentors, uh, who is from University of uh, Osnabrück. And then we have uh, staff represented by um, Aike diaz Joins. Aike is a PhD student at uh, Erasmus University, investigating diverse students' sense of belonging in higher education. And we have uh, Kim Owehand, uh, who is an assistant professor in psychology and pedagogical sciences at Erasmus University. And both Aike and Kim took part in uh, I Belong interventions uh, intended for staff members. So here the intention of this panel session is to uh, reflect on I Belong interventions you went through and uh, to, to discuss the importance of uh, sense of belonging in higher education from a student's per perspective and also from the perspective of those who work with students. So what I would like first, because we said this will be more informal and uh, we also said that it's very important to hear your personal stories of um, belonging and inclusion and your personal tra trajectories to higher education. I would like to have the same question for all because I know your personal histories, uh, the part that you shared with me, and I think it's very interesting for uh, to start this discussion. From where did you come to your uh, higher education uh, position as a student or as a staff mentor? So I will first say Amina because I see Amina first on screen. So Amina you can you can start okay so um like my background is my parents came um from bosnia as refugees in 1993 and um i was born in the netherlands in rotterdam and my brother he was born in bosnia and um yeah for my parents when they came here it was like very different because they've never been in a country like uh, a new country where everything was new and they had to experience all the things like getting a house and uh, getting a new job and education system and everything was new for them so they didn't actually know how to uh, how to figure that out easily so they had a lot of help from dutch people and um so yeah they had actually the challenge to figure out how how everything works and i think that's also a big part with the school system they they really had trouble with they didn't know where to send me because like i did my tests and like preschool and, and primary school and like middle school i did everything as i was as i was supposed to do but they didn't know like okay how do you send your kid to a university or how do you do those things so we actually had a lot of help from me and my brother's friends because they also went through the same process but they were dutch so they knew everything and they kind of guided us through and i think my parents more learned more from me from the school system than the other way around so for me it was like i had to figure it out more myself than they could help me with it and um i also have like i did many studies because i didn't know what i wanted to do i think i've, I've been studying since 2012 and um i finally found the study that i like but it, it, it took me like a lot of years to figure it out so yeah that's my background Jamina, uh, it's never too late to figure out what you want. It's it's okay. <laughs> um, okay, thank you for pointing out the the social network that was important for important for you. Uh, when I say social network, I don't mean uh, Facebook, Twitter. I mean you know people that you rely on to guide you through through difficulties, and that for you were uh, people uh, Dutch friends. Okay, thank you, uh, Joshua. What was your uh, story? First of all, I uh, wanted to say thanks for having us here. Um, my background, um, I'm coming out of a family which isn't the closest to education as well. So um, there are many difficulties with, with that. Um, and I'm actually a first generation student, but I'm not at that point of view, like many other first generation students, because I have two older sisters and they both are students as well. And um, because of that, there are many experiences uh, that I can share with them that they could give to me so that I can 
um, have many, uh, many better um, opportunities because of them. I, I've made, um, I guess you can say it's like a school-based apprenticeship, which I made in the nursing and um, care system in, in Germany. And um, I've worked with disabled people in, uh, in the main. And so that was the, the first way in, in the education, so mainly. And from that, I, um, I've earned, I've got the ability to go to the universities. And that was so the way. And my, my older, older sister, um was actually as well in Osnabrück and so there the experiences as well which helped me there mm -hmm. and that that was so the way which made my way into into that thank you joshua so we have thermamina we have social network extended social network with you we have a family support that was important for your um path let's hear now from kim Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm Kim, an assistant professor at Erasmus University in Rotterdam. Um, yeah, my, my career has also taken some weird steps. I've, uh, well, let's start. I uh, was born in South Korea in Seoul, uh, where I was given up for adoption. I'm from 81. It was, I think, very regular at the time. Um, and um, I was um, um, set in a family in the Netherlands, in a town called Katwijk. I think some people even call it a Bible town. Um, it was a bit like that. I've been raised with very traditional uh, um, yeah, uh, rules also in the family. So studying was not something that was kind of explicitly advertised for me. And if I would study, I would have become like a primary school teacher or a nurse, something like that fits the gender roles. Um, so, but I eventually like to study uh, psychology. It took some turns around because, uh, yeah, they said I, I, we wouldn't pay for, for university. I could do some other stuff, but not that. So I just took an extra evening job um, at healthcare. <laughs> um, but I learned also a lot there to, to pay for my job and uh, or for, my, for my tuition. And um, yeah, eventually that gave, gave me more motivation because I did it on my own to succeed and every good grade was my own grade. Um, not that I have a, a, a bad relationship with my parents, it was just something they, that was beyond their level of, of uh, understanding, I guess. And that, there's a lot of love, but they just feared that this was not a safe place to go because they are very safe people. So um, yeah, um, but it, it turned out eventually and they're very proud of me, uh, what I've become. Um, so I, I kind of extended their their borders too, like what Amina said, I think they learned more from the school system from me than the other way around. Um, but I think that, that's good, that intergenerational thing that we can learn from each other and that, that is changing now. Yeah. Nice, thank you. Uh, I have to tell you that a colleague sitting next to me uh, said, I feel her because your story uh, has been heard. I think that she faced some similarities. So I, I believe it's a story that uh, many can relate to, you know, uh, being, uh, having, uh, being left with the feeling that you are on your own without support uh, in that, those terms, but then every grade feels, as you said, even better, uh, more appreciated. Nice, thank you. And uh, let's hear from Aike. Uh, yes, thank you also for uh, having us here. Um, my story is, uh, well, actually, I, the, the first step is that I moved to another city across the country uh, where I knew no one. And I started with uh, vocational, uh, no, um, a university of applied sciences. Um, and actually that for me, that was my first step in feeling more a sense of belonging um, because I also am a first generation student. Um, and even though my mother was very supportive of me going to university, um, she had no personal experience. So uh, in that sense, I also, uh, something like Kim, I also really experienced things on my own and from what I did myself. Um, but then when I felt a lot of sense of belonging to Rotterdam in this case, uh, when I finally went from University of Applied Sciences to the university, 
a program that really helped me because I already felt a sense of belonging to the city that I was studying in. But still, um, I noticed, and even after graduating and, and working in higher education, I do still feel in some ways insecurity from my background and kind of, do I have the right uh, background knowledge? Uh, do I have the right ways of talking? Um, yeah, and I think that's partly to do with my background. Thank you, Aike. I think that uh, having this overview from where all of you come from uh, to the academia, I uh, can also start the discussion now um, because uh, yesterday when we had a prep call, it was very interesting when, when Kim mentioned uh, I didn't feel represented. So I would like to start uh, with, the, with the question, having this in mind, your backgrounds and where you came from, how much you felt when you joined faculty or in case of Aike and uh, Kim, when you joined uh, being a staff member at the faculty, how much you felt represented? Did you see your stories reflected in others? Did you even have a chance to exchange or it was very kind of uh, a system that is more like, okay, this is your work, we don't exchange <laughs> personal information. So um, was there a space to exchange? Did you feel safe to do that? And um, yeah, if you could uh, reflect on that, Aike, because you are on my screen, I will start uh, from you. Um, yeah, well, actually, oh, sorry, we're in the same room, so there is an echo. Um, when I started working uh, at the faculty, I actually did not, because it's not a visible thing, uh, being a first generation student, um, I actually uh, did not really feel a lot of representation and I actually felt really insecure because of the also the culture within higher education that it's quite higher hierarchical um, a lot of hierarchy and um, yeah it's very competitive so in that sense the fact that I had a different background yeah made made me quite insecure at the beginning and not kind of seeing yeah, I didn't know if there were other colleagues who were also first generation students, for example. So that was actually quite tough um, in my case. Okay, um, Amina. Um, yeah, with me, it's like um, almost as what I said, but in a different kind of way. It's like uh, everything was new for me. And I was like, okay, there's a new environment, a new location new students, new way of lecturing, like everything was new. And when you have like nobody who was, who was like at the same way, like you, okay, like, I don't know. It was, I don't, I didn't know what to expect. So for me, it was like, um, as soon as I met the first people from my, from my studies, I felt like a little bit, like the ice broke a little bit. So I was able to like, okay, I know where I have to go for a lecture. And I can imagine people like, for example, coming from family, families like refugee families or stuff like that, or maybe other cultures. Um, uh, it's a little, I, like Aika said, it's a little bit tougher to find um, that sense of like, okay, I belong. And uh, I think you can be left out very easily when, um, when you have this feeling like um, I have to find someone that, that can help me with it, but I don't know where to look. I think that's more, yeah, I, I, I would like say it like that, yeah. Thank you, Joshua. The things I mainly recognize were here so many other people with parents from academic households. So that, um, I, I, uh, I think there are statistics with that says that three out of 10 persons are from non-academic parents uh, at a university. And so I'm, I'm one of the three. So, and that is, that is something um, when, when you're talking to the others, it's, it's always these, my parents does that, my parents does that. And um, that, that they got their experience from from that persons and from their family automatically because of their um, because of the, the past from there and but uh, what Amina said um, this this um, hard feeling of the sense of belonging that there's not actually there when you're a first generation student that's not how I felt that because um, I felt this in the way that 
this was so I, I am a first generation student and I were at the university and in the first week and I thought, wow, you, you've made it. So you, you're one of the family uh, or you're one of in the first generation and wow, you made it and you're here and now you're going to show them all. And so a bit, a bit of that feeling. And um, because of that, there automatically come my, came my sense of belonging into, into that. So I can absol absolutely understand it when you're saying um, that that's hard because there are not that many people that have the same past, past like you. But um, I felt it a bit, a bit different, actually. Nice. It, uh, it feels uh, very warm uh, when you when you say it that way, like, oh, I'm here and I belong because I worked hard to come here. It's, um, nice. Thank you. Um, Kim, how is it for you? Yeah, well, like I said, I grew up in this, this town that was very white in a white family. So I always thought that was an asset because I knew how to think white. Uh, but it was also kind of a disadvantage because I, I understood all the stereotypes about uh, immigrants, also Asian people, all the funny jokes. I knew where it came from, but it was offensive to me. So it was kind of a double vision all the time. Um, so I never could get angry with them while I felt the anger. So that was in my hometown a problem. But afterwards, uh, when I eventually went to study uh, at Leiden University within my group it was not a problem uh, I had a great time at psychology uh, but I did notice the difference between Rotterdam and Leiden uh, just on a university on a, on a city basis the city is more like widely dominated has some more implicit rules about being students the, uh, the, the big uh, student fraternities were very uh, in you know if you were not a member uh, um, yeah you were None of the minority, but at least I think at least half of the people joined one, especially at some tracks. And uh, when I went to Rotterdam, it was totally different because here it was not uh, talk the talk, but walk the walk. I didn't really have to work. And I think that mentality of the city uh, is also uh, represented in university. And when I came there and I saw all these different faces and people, I did not um, stood out anymore. And in fact, when people in my hometown were kind of talking to me with a kind of Asian accent they impersonated. It's very offensive, but they did it a lot of the times. And actually in Rotterdam, I've been speaking to, uh, spoken to in Chinese by a lot of the Chinese students, which at first I thought was a bit offensive because I thought I don't feel this way. And then afterwards I think, oh, here they are actually speaking the language that they honestly think, you know, seriously think uh, that I am and I, they want to talk to me. So it was kind of, flipped around and um, I thought, oh, people see me now for who I am. Then I had to say, of course, I cannot speak the language, but I am actually Asian. So that kind of helped me embrace my Asian-ness within my white background. Um, I don't know if I make sense anymore, but it, yeah, I think the transition to Rotterdam really helped with that. So it was first Leiden that already helped a bit intellectually and then go to Rotterdam. Yeah, I, I'm happy. I, if they want to have me uh, until my pension, I will stay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, you make a lot of sense. And uh, I, I have to tell uh, to the audience, uh, I really liked your joke yesterday. Well, you, it was not a joke when you said, oh, I'm so glad Vogue movement is here and it arrived because it takes out all the jokes and all the inappropriate comments. So yeah, that was, uh, that was a nice comment. I, I uh, felt it. <laughs> strongly okay um but uh, now question for a lot of you uh what support was there um and what was needed what is still needed to make you uh feel like you belong like uh, was there something that you really um see like oh this program really helped me and uh, aha i wish there was this type of support that i don't know you heard from some other colleague at other university and also how does i belong uh fit to that like uh, the process that you went with us in the last three years how did that improve the situation um whoever wants to start first And shall then you I, really know this Shall I start? <laughs> okay. I guess. Um, well, uh, the things that I think are here, and it, it's kind of uh, mentioned by Kim, that visibly there is quite a lot of diversity in the campus. Uh, I think mainly the students and staff, I don't know what the representation is, but um, I think 
I, I talk to a lot of students and they also say like visibly uh, Rotterdam University is quite diverse. I think that there is a lot of outreach work and, and strategies, at least how it's presented uh, to the, the city. They're, they're really focused on diversity and including everyone in the city. Um, and in terms of uh, what I think, what I, I learned uh, throughout this project and what I think is needed a lot more is really working further in um, the teacher force and, and what is needed to uh, together um, deal with this topic and um, and not, uh, I think that, the, for example, team teacher reflection was a good start, but that's definitely not the, the where it should end. And that for me was an eye opener during this project, but also what I see with colleagues. And I think in terms of content and courses, they're there, the focus on diversity, but more in kind of teaching everyone and talking about how you deal with it. I think there is a lot of room for improvement here. Do you want to share yeah. Aika's view? Yeah, I, I agree also with Aika. And um, I also want to mention uh, the, the mentor program that Amina and uh, for us is in. And I, I guess you said Joshua is also a mentor. I think these programs are very important. What, I would need is a little more also in, um, um, investment also in us teachers guiding the mentors more uh, and maybe have some more community building with the mentors and the mentees together because now it's we're passing it through to the mentors and the mentors are uh, passing it through to the mentees and I would like some more you know togetherness with all of us and what I would need I think the attention level is very good but what I would need is just some more fine-tuning at uh, what what can we talk about because now it's yeah, the woke movements here also oh some some colleagues say we cannot talk about anything anymore no we should talk about everything at the moment and that's where we kind of lack is this skill of, of what can we ask? You know, sometimes it's just a simple question. Where are you from? What, what, what are you used to in the education system you are in? And we have special uh, groups, the PBL groups, in which where students need to talk and be assertive. And in some cultures, it's not uh, 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 desirable to do that. And when students come from that culture, but we don't know it, we will give them a bad grade because they will not, you know, contribute to the discussion. Just asking a simple question can even prevent so students going to the student psychologist or something because they do not fit in or they feel they do not fit in. And just asking, what should I do? Should I give you turns? What, what would you appreciate? And then, yeah, sometimes say, yeah, just please give me a turn yeah, once in a while. And then it's fixed. Sometimes it's as simple as that. And, but to ask it, it sometimes feels a bit uncomfortable because I had students crying sometimes when I asked in the group. Uh, and then afterwards I apologized and they were actually happy that I asked, but you know, so we have to deal with that too. We have to get trained. What can we ask and how can we deal with these situations? So there is also more awareness, you would say, among staff colleagues uh, on this now. But the, what is missing is fine tuning and more training on that. Yes, yes. What yeah. what can we say or how can we, you know, you can never prevent students crying. And maybe this student would be crying anyway, uh, not because of this issue, but because she's just stressed. Um, but how can we deal with that? Because it's also, you know, stressful for us. We do not want to uh, uh, embarrass students or have them feel this. Um, but we do want that they can present themselves and, and all the talent they have in them. And if we cannot, you know, facilitate a fair chance for them by opening up kind of a discussion, um, I feel that would be the, the, the most unfair situation in this, in this part. Yeah, but I, we, we need some help with that too. <laughs> to, you know, yeah, I think that the uh, team teacher training was uh, part of that. I think that the uh, I belong team teacher training addressed uh, in part how you deal with the hot topics in the classroom and how you make uncomfortable situation more comfortable, as Mary was already mentioning in the previous panel. But let me ask our students, uh, how is it from your perspective? Like, do you do you feel uh, more support? Uh, do you see change among uh, co uh, course members, uh, staff members? Um, how, how does it feel from the other side of the mirror? I'm starting. <laughs> so um, I guess, the, I don't, 
from my perspective, the most important thing is that you have some someone, some persons that are there, which are there. So that somebody is there who you can talk to and that's just present. And we've got the situation, or I, I am got I've got the situation that we talk to the new students and all digital as well because there were so many and because of corona and so and we said to them that at any time when they see us on the campus and they can talk to us so there's no problem if they have a problem they can talk to us if there's no problem they can talk to us as well we are there we are present and just if they wanted to say hi so that's totally okay and uh, we are um and uh, that's that would would be good for us as well to talk to them and i've got this one situation that i was running across the the campus and um i ran ac across a person person beside me and he said so uh, and i was ne nearly beside him and he said hi <laughs> and I, 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 I was shook <laughs> so <laughs> And uh, I'm running further because I, I thought that's it's, it's some person I don't know. So, and um, I'm running a circle and, and ran, ran back to him and uh, talked to him and said, "Ah, wait! Yesterday there was there was, there was uh, this curse big digital." And and he said, "Yeah, I said uh, I, I saw you there." So, and I was ah. And you told them to find you whenever they want, so they did the <laughs> online, yeah. offline. They didn't choose, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah. Uh, I, uh, yeah, sorry. Continue. And and we're we're going on a, a few more a few more hundred meters and and just talked and talked about the university and to start at the university and it was it was a so nice situation and that that is I think that's so important that you have the, the feeling, okay, I, I know this person which is running there and I can talk to him. So, and um, that was actually a, a really nice situation. And I, I believe that this is really important that there is something, some persons you can talk to and on the campus or in some other uh, sort of situations like, like you, you've made, uh, or like email contact and you made some dates um, to, to talk together and I, I guess that's really important. Thank you, Joshua. I, I hope uh, they now you are more uh, uh, used to seeing people live, <laughs> not being surprised with it. Um, Amina, what about you? Uh, with me, I think it's um, the inclusion is more coming from the students um, and also for me from other faculties. Well, because my faculty is like. Um, yeah, how would I say it? Like, it's maybe I don't know if it's okay to say it, but it's like mostly white girls with blonde hair, and you know, and there's not a lot of diversity. And I feel like, just like Kim said, most people don't want to talk about it, but it should be addressed. Like, there, are div there is diversity, and um, people are often like very scared to talk about things, and they just look away, like, okay, diversity, okay, we're not going to talk about it, and maybe we're not going to, it's not going to be there, you know, but it is there. and. I think at the university as a location, I think they're doing good because I know there's like also a, a, a place where you can pray as a Muslim. They have like a special room and they have student associations for uh, students from different ethnicities or religious uh, and stuff like that, you know. So I know the university, they have it figured out kind of, but um, the way to approach it, to approach those things, like I, I didn't know until I heard from other students, from other faculties, that that's possible and that I can go and visit those places. And if I didn't know those students, I would never know about it. So I think that the university should like embrace it more and like, okay, as soon as you step on campus, like uh, you see everything that's representing the university except for like the diversity, you know, maybe you see pictures of uh, different students, but like, um, yeah, more like addressing it, like approaching students more as they approach, approach students with other subjects or the other stuff from the university. So I think that's important. And uh, do, you, do you all agree or disagree or there are nuances uh, that uh, the, the sense of belonging and feeling like you belong has something to do with student success? Can you uh, address this? I mean, we are talking about this topic, but then we think that 
we crack the code, that we know that uh, a feeling sense of belonging really uh, supports you, but it's also interesting to hear directly from, from students and also staff members, uh, how do they relate um, these things in your personal uh, stories? Like, for, okay. Um, yeah, for, I think it's, it depends also on the student because some students are like introvert more so with them you have to approach them more to be able to get it out of them like okay you belong to like you belong to the like you you know the sense of belonging is there and some students like for me example i'm like I, I, i'm social i can't say that i'm social enough so for me it was like i was go to the library or like if i go there like all days of the week uh, in the a matter of time like you get to know more students and then for me like the sense of belonging i was i, I looked for it and i found it myself you know so i think for the students that are like not that uh, eager to like uh, step out and just go to search i think for them it's very helpful to have a, the like to be to come to campus and to be like okay like yes i can see that they care about me they don't even know me but i can see that they want to embrace like who i am and like not my sense of belonging, it matters to them. So yeah. Thank you, Kim. Aisha from from yeah. the um, other staff. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I, I, I kind of give an um, an example of last year where I coordinated a course on a multicultural perspective on education and uh, parenting styles, and I was at first time for the first time I was I was teaching with another colleague who's visibly uh, Islamic, huh? she wears a headscarf and we were on, on screen and I kind of saw kind of a sense of belonging on some of the faces, especially the girls with the headscarves, like, oh, you know, laughing also, smiling at us and then in hindsight we kind of, when we, when we uh, progressed the discussion, we kind of came to the topic where, we, where they said, uh, this is the first time where we see someone like us at the other end of like the school table eh, who's teaching us. So for us, it's, it's like an empowerment of we could be there, you know, because look at her, she's standing there, but we haven't seen her before. We just see all these, yeah, mostly people or, or, or women like you, you know, uh, entitled by the white culture, embracing the Western culture. So for us, it seems there is no place, but now we see there is. And of course, I know from that colleague, she's the only one that visibly uh, Islamic within, within our section. So for us, we could improve even more. Uh, but yeah, just one person is already that important. And I, I, like I said, I never saw a sense of belonging on only facial expressions, but I saw it in that classroom. Yeah, it's really, uh, I, I, it was also very, very touching. Yeah. It matters, right? No. Aike? Yes, I have an example. I don't know if they're yeah, uh, from uh, I think that was a case uh, where I was working as a tutor uh, in a classroom. Uh, and it also had to do with a student who was wearing a headscarf. Um, and what was happening, we were uh, talking about the content of the course and uh, it was an educational course. And some of the students really, um, yeah, they, they spoke directly to, to her and they asked her questions like, why are you all sitting together if you wear a headscarf in the call in the lecture hall? And um, what I remember, I also talked about this with the team te teacher reflection is at that moment as a tutor, I wasn't trained to deal with any of these kind of conversations. So I think I, yeah, I had time, I, I needed time to know what to do and I still don't think I handle it correctly, but that was something where I could see for this student it really impacted her sense of belonging because the other students were really kind of saying like in other words like you don't belong here or you're so different that we can see it and we we think we're entitled to ask questions about it um and i could see her kind of uh, retracting and her effort throughout the rest of the course was less and she was really kind of yeah she was distancing herself from the group i think in a way and for me that was such a good example of why and well what i said before that the teacher should be trained properly to deal with these issues because it really impacts the sense of belonging of students um yeah and then their success i think you know i don't know how she did in that course but i can imagine it has an impact on her uh, success as well yeah. Thank you, Erika. That's a really uh, specific example, but it really shows uh, in, in practice how someone can really uh, back off uh, in a way from, from studies if, if this is a situation they would have to encounter every day. Um, 
Um, I would uh, like to, because I, I am seeing the time, <laughs> um, maybe to conclude with the, with the last question, and that's uh, how do you think uh, your personal experiences uh, that we mentioned at the beginning of panel uh, made you aware of all these things and uh, impacted the way you um, <clears throat> make interactions with others? at your department where you work or with other students? Like, do you think that the, your personal stories shaped uh, in a way your interest in this or it was something else? Uh, because we skipped Joshua in the previous one. Maybe we start with Joshua now. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just, uh, I'm, I'm still thinking about that um, because I, I I believe that it is that way that when you when you're talking to to new students which have made um, similar experiences like you, that that could be really helpful um, for the sense of belonging as well as um, for for uh, the communication as well. But I'm not quite sure. Um, if it made that that man, I don't, hmm. I'm I, as said, I, I'm still thinking about that because I'm not sure if it made um, that much um, if, if it's so, impact. Yeah. yeah. Um, but as, as as said, I I'm believing that that is really really important and that my my personal history um, could could help. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm sure that it's that way, but uh, where we talked about the the other students and um, the feeling of the other students and uh, um, how how inclusive they are to the other people, and I I believe that in the university there are so many people as uh, I just said, Claude, uh, I believe that uh, there are so many people who wants to include you and not to exclude you and um, that it's not that important which the background is what background is behind the people when they're inclusive persons and they they want to include you that they can do it as well and and nevertheless from from the background so um but yeah i've, I've, I've I believe that it's it's important the background, but um, not maybe not the most important things. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, good good perspective. Uh, anyone who would also like to comment on this? Yeah, very short, very shortly. I, what I would also like to mention is when I say all these challenges to my youth, it's not because I have an extra challenge or something. It's something we have to deal with. But what I want to say to the students is that not despite these challenges, we will succeed, but because of these challenges and that we overcome them, we will succeed. And that we want to have attention for the students with every single background and that they could always come to us. Yeah, and I think like what Kim is saying with the, um, the aware, like I think with the awareness of students, like for example, I, I, I saw, I've saw, I've seen things here on campus. So for me, I'm aware of what's happening and I'm, I, I kind of, when I have like my new mentees or I, I meet new students, I look at them in a more open-minded way because I'm aware of what's happening and I'm aware like, okay, like I want to see you all the perspectives you have, like not just the one that the student won and oh yeah, you have to perform like this and this. And I remember like this year when I have my new mentees, um, one of them is Moroccan and like, I also like told them all the like cafes where you can go to, but I also know like Muslims don't oh, don't usually go like to cafes, bars to go drink and stuff. So I told her also like you have the praying room where you can go to pray. You have study, uh, like uh, the student associations. And she was like really thankful because I don't think anybody would, would have told her until like next year when she makes like new friends and more friends to figure that out. So like, I think I'm adjusting uh, a lot to the, um, to the lack of diversity. I think uh, with that, I can bring in more diversity to just kind of compensate that. That's what I'm trying to at least. 
Thank you, Amina. Stay student for several more years, please, because I think uh, uh, mentees new, need that type of support and that type of mentor. Thank you. Should I uh, say <laughs> something? Sorry. Uh, very quickly, what I think, I think it, um, it, it, it connects with what Amina is saying, that you should make things more explicit and share more of the information besides, for example, the introduction week, which is like more focused on students who like to drink and party, for example, that to share more information. But also uh, what I realized is that as teachers, um, besides what the visible, uh, the example that Kim gave, the visible aspects, to also make explicit the invisible background that you have so that students see kind of the whole person of the teachers and that not the kind of academic um, culture of yeah um, competition is is kind of shown but also the other side like uh, the diversity of the the teaching staff visible and non-visible i think those are things that are really important to, yeah that i i realized throughout this project thank you there is a lot of nodding i'm hearing <laughs> from my colleagues here and uh, uh, confirming uh, to what you are all saying i think that uh, because of the time i think i i should say that there is a comment uh, thanks for sharing your experiences it's so valuable i think that you made nice impression to the audience so certainly on me as well um there is a question can i ask you about if what you were taught your readings lectures affected your sense of belonging um anyone has something to contribute uh that immediately pops up on your mind um, yeah. you repeat the question um if uh, uh, the question is if what you thought uh, you were taught and the readings and the lectures affected your sense of belonging it was in part uh, answered uh, that it's kind of uh, it's not only this or that it's all but uh, if anyone wants to answer maybe if um, if you have an answer to that maybe i start um sure yes i've, I've made these experience and in a in a proper way i, I think i believe um i've got some some courses with some some lectures and after that i i thought well i'm um i can really good imagine to work for them so and and that's what i'm doing now <laughs> so um there was so, some, Glenn, so, so yes it made uh, an impact on you yeah and and um I, I sat in the courses and and thought, wow, that's so, um, that, that's so so uh, so so many experience which which getting me so deep in there with with all of my my thinkings and over the the typical uh, daily life from a student and and I've, I'm going out of the of the of the rooms and uh, thought the whole day after that about the the uh, about the the course. And, and so I, so I, I asked um, if it would be possible to, to work for them and um, uh, it, it uh, worked out for me that I, I worked for two years or more, uh, for two years uh, for the university. And um, because of the, the lecturers, um, which made so much um, which gave, which gave so much for me, for my personality, for all of me, for my thinking, for all my, my thinking and how it shaped. This is fantastic. When I listen to, to you, Joshua, I feel like I want to return to my faculty. <laughs> you have su such a passion for studying and also a passion for your uh, course and uh, your future work. It's, uh, it's nice to hear that. Well, um, you mentioned several times, thank you for inviting us. I want to thank you for uh, taking your time to participate, especially because I know some of you uh, participated in a previous ones. So you're kind of like a regular on I Belong uh, events. So thank you for taking your time. Thank you for contributing to our final event. And I hope you um, continue changing your departments and the students around you. 
uh, good luck with everything. And uh, I would like to invite Marike from, uh, to come out of the breakout room if she is still there so that we um, close the first part of the day. And thank you once again. Thank you as well, Ivana. <laughs> Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you. Mariki will be now with us. Okay, to close. Yes, uh, thank you all for your inspiring uh, and wonderful personal stories and experiences that are so very important um, for higher education and I think also beyond uh, academia. Um, it's time for a lunch break. Uh, we have looked back at our experiences in the I Belong pro program in this morning and this afternoon. Um, from one o'clock onwards, it's time to move forward because we are not yet done on the topic of a sense of belonging and um, inclusiveness in higher education. Uh, so uh, this afternoon, uh, we will move forward uh, on this topic and uh, I hope to see you all after lunch. Thank you.